why was the presence of a president and how they reacted on a foreign policy uh, from a poli foreign policy standpoint so important to you? You know, we uh, potentially face three conflicts on the global stage. Um, we've always uh, been a beacon for democracy, democracy across um, the globe. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Jason Momoa, Lisa Ann Walter, and music from Alkaline Trio with Cleto and the Cleto. And now... Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. Please relax. This is, um, I know it's an exciting day. All eyes were upon us this morning. The whole town got up bright and early for Oscar nomination day. And I have to say, I love Oscar nomination day. Uh, for the eighth year in a row, I do this every year, woke up, texted Matt Damon, 5.30 a.m., <laughs> just to let him know he didn't get one again. And <laughs> his movie did, though, despite his grotesque presence. Oppenheimer was the big winner this morning with 13 nominations, including Best Picture. Four things for the 11. Martin Scorsese is now the most nominated leaving director. His movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, got 10 nominations. And Barbie was nominated for eight Academy Awards, which who would have imagined? I mean, when you heard they were making a movie about Barbie, they would get nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. It's a movie, I mean, maybe a five-year-old girl? Margot Robbie and Greta Gerwig were not nominated for acting or directing, whereas Ryan Gosling was. He got a nomination for playing Ken, which ironically was kind of the plot of the Barbie movie. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. You know, Ryan Gosling plays a guy with no testicles and gets an Oscar nomination. Ron DeSantis does it. He has to drop out of the primary. It's not fair. It's not fair. Another one in the mix for Best Picture is a movie called Anatomy of a Fall, which is a French film about the murder trial of a famous person who is accused of killing her spouse. It's like, it's like the French OJ trial, or as they called it, the Ajou trial over there. 91-year-old <laughs> composer and conductor John Williams is now the oldest Oscar nominee ever, beating himself. God bless him. 91 years old, still beating himself. I have to say that that is... Once again, Donald Trump was cheated out of an Oscar nomination by the <laughs> radical left-wing Academy, which is a shame because he loves movies so much so he brings movies up all the time. You know the movie I'm talking about, right? A Star is Born. Air Force One. Whatever happened to Gone with the Wind? Beauty and the Beast. Right. The Champ. Chinatown, coming home. The Dark Knight Rises, which is commonly known as the Batman movie. Deliverance. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I like that movie, right? Well, I'm in Home Alone, too. He's a Manchurian candidate. Mission Impossible. Classic Indian films like DDLJ and J. And the winner is a movie from South Korea. What the hell was that all about? Midnight Cowboy. Sunset Boulevard. Pocahontas. Has anybody seen Silence of the Lambs? Hannibal Lecter, how great an actor was he? Star Wars, National Treasure, Superman, I just like, Quack. Did somebody say Spartacus? T-1000 and Terminator 2. The Titanic! He raised interest rates too fast, too furious. Raging Bull. Rambo or Rocky, Top Gun. Name of the movie, come on. Death Wish. Remember that? Oh, we're gonna cut you up, sir. We're gonna cut you up. Oh, oh, oh. Bing. Yeah, the Bing was the best part of the movie. Thank you, uh, Draft Dodger Ebert. Two tiny thumbs up. Today was the New Hampshire primary. Republicans in New Hampshire had a major choice to make. Who do they vote for? The woman who would become their party's first ever female nominee for president or the first guy on trial for defamation related to sexual assault. It was a tough choice. <laughs> Nikki Haley got off to a strong start. She won all the votes in Dixville Notch, which was the first town to count this morning. Unfortunately, they only have six registered voters in Dixville Notch. <laughs> she got them all. Haley had a unique advantage in New Hampshire because, like the state, her initials are NH. So they... <laughs> which, after tonight, will stand for not happening, but... Uh... <laughs> 
Trump has called for Nikki Haley to drop out. She said, I don't do what he tells me to do, which is going to be extra funny when she drops out and then immediately endorses him. But that might not be for a while. Haley will almost certainly stay in the race until the primary in her home state of South Carolina next month. And she might just be hanging around in case Trump goes to prison. You know, they would need another option. And she, you know, she keeps saying that um, Trump and Biden are too old to be president. And he doesn't like that at all. Um, so Nikki Haley says now she has the two-person race that she's always wanted. She keeps bringing up your age lately. What do you say about that? Well, I think I'm a lot sharper than her. I would do this. I would sit down right now and take an aptitude test, and it would be my result against her result, and she's not going to win. She's not going to even come close to winning. He is something else. He differentiates one whale from one giraffe. All of a sudden, he thinks he's Ken Jennings or something. He's... <laughs> but I say, if he's challenging her, if this is his idea, let's do that. She should call him on that immediately, right? Do not let him off the hook. Let Take him up on it. Let's get that test going. The two of you need to sit down, side by side, live television, not so close he can cheat off you, but pretty close to each other. <laughs> we'll put a divider between you so he doesn't get chicken nugget grease on your dress. And <laughs> Let's find out whose brain works better. We'll call it Cognition Impossible. It would be the television event of the year. First question, Mr. Trump, define the word aptitude. <laughs> it's when the plane goes up. It's, I'd love to host that show. I, I bet he couldn't pass the quiz on a Denny's placemat. <laughs> Over the weekend, Trump quite obviously confused Nikki Haley with Nancy Pelosi. He's made a speech accusing Nikki Haley of mishandling January 6th. But Greg Kelly of Newsmax, this is interesting, he saw the slip up differently. He believes it makes a case for the former president's cognitive abilities. Let's look at the names for a second. Nancy Pelosi and Nikki Haley. All right, they both start with N's. They both end in vowels, both the first name and the last name. The names arguably are rather similar, okay? But I think he actually meant to say Nikki Haley. He said it on purpose, and the fake news fell for it. My God, he's right. Trump was testing us, and we he got us again. On... <laughs> He made a mistake on purpose. I mean, how do you... He makes himself look like an idiot intentionally, and then we think he's an idiot. That's how smart he is. That's, you know... That's like he's playing... We're playing checkers, he's playing chess or something, or maybe Candyland, I don't know. You know, we haven't seen a whole lot of Melania lately. She's not been on the campaign trail, but Brian Kilmeade of Fox & Friends believes she's about to step up and play a bigger role. She always did play a big role. She was uh, somebody that you could rely on. She's very smart, a very compassionate person. She wants to, uh, she really wants to see, she wants to make America great again, too. And I would rely on her for advice and all of the others. It was really, uh, I think she's going to be very active in the sense of being active. Right, she will be active. In the sense of being active, she's going to... You might even say she'll be actively active, which um, I assume they haven't spoken in years. But And then Kilme took the opportunity to kiss Trump's sizable but slightly less sizable now ass. You look like you're in fighting shape. How much weight did you lose? Maybe 15, maybe 20. How? Uh, the hard way. I work. <laughs> I've work. been No, I've been so busy, I haven't been... I haven't been able to eat very much. I don't, I'm not able to sit down and eat like a person like you. You can sit down and eat me. It's a little bit tougher. Okay. So he's on Ozempic for sure, right? I mean, <laughs> it's always fun to watch him exaggerate numbers in real time. They're like, how much weight did you lose? Maybe 15, maybe 20. Me, actually 50. Um, <laughs> people come up to me crying. They say, sir, how did you lose 100 pounds? And I say, I work too hard to eat. <laughs> Trump made his final pitch to voters in New Hampshire last night and wrapped things up with another one of his famous I Have a Nightmare speeches. This is when he plays dramatic music under his words to try to scare the hell out of everyone. We have become a drug-infested, crime-ridden nation which is incapable of solving even the smallest, smallest problem, the simplest of problems we can no longer solve. We can't do anything. What an uplifting message. Thank you, Dr. Martin Luther King, for <laughs> sharing that with us. That's um, something we can all rally around. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I was at CVS the other night.
And I took a photograph. Can we put that photograph up on the screen? This is a, um, <laughs> you know these, Depend. Uh, the, I thought it was called Depends, but I guess it's called Depend. I'm gonna call it Depends because that's how it is in my brain. But apparently they're hiring Bachelor contestants to be on the packages now. I don't know, are we to believe that men this age are using Depends? <laughs> Imagine being a model and booking this job. Great news, they loved you. Who loved? Um, depends. <laughs> depends on what? I don't, no, no, it depends. The diapers for adults loved you. I stood there and I was really wondering what must it be like to be the face, let's look at that again, of diapers. So we tracked down the models. Uh, all three of the models we managed to find, I would like you now to welcome Laith Walshlegger, Rumondo Kelly, and Stu Lee. <laughs> Who you can see <laughs> holding up their depends. It's like we've assembled the Avengers of Incontinence here. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you guys for joining us. And also, I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, have you ever met each other? No. No. Nope. Never. Okay. No. First so time. Okay, no. and um, no. well, I mean, first of all, let's start with Laith. Laith, you are a football player. Yeah, yeah, I used to, um, I used to play in the NFL for the Arizona Cardinals, and then uh, I played a little arena football after that. And now I am happily retired. And do your teammates know about this? Are they aware that that you are on the the bo the bag there? Oh yeah, they're they're wearing them before games, man. It's how they warm up. <laughs> All right, Romando, uh, tell me, what do you do besides this? Okay, I'm, I was a teacher, sixth uh -huh. grade language arts. Oh, my God! <laughs> yeah. Sixth grade language arts, and did the students ever see you in the diaper? Unfortunately, yes. They, they called did. me a couple of times. And how did they <laughs> react to that? Because, boy, we had some teachers that um, I don't think they would have survived. <laughs> I survived. You did. <laughs> and also, Ramondo, I want to point out, not only are you, this is you on Just For Men also, the hair dye, right? <laughs> That's me. Are there other? Like, <laughs> this guy runs. Yeah. Are there other embarrassing <laughs> packages that we should know about that you, a little Trojan condiments or something like that? <laughs> no Trojan condiments. All Those right. the only two. And Stu, Stu Lee is... Stu, you have a PhD? I do. Uh, well, yeah, I go for... I go board of nuclear physics, uh, electrical engineering, computer science, so I went to modeling underwear. Like a lot of people, you got bored with nuclear <laughs> physics and you went into underwear modeling. Now, these are not actually <laughs> underwear. These are like under-underwear, aren't they? <laughs> Emergency. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm aware of underwear. Yeah. Have exactly. any of you ever worn these in a practical way? <sighs> Sometimes when I got to mow the lawn and it's raining, yeah. That's <laughs> Do you ever get noticed at like the drugstore? When I'm in the aisle. <laughs> Depends aisle? Yeah. And everybody asks. Do Why I would you one? ever be in the Depends aisle? <laughs> Are you hanging right around there. hoping to get recognized? <laughs> what happens? How much do you make? What's the range of how much you make um, to be humiliated for the rest of your life? <laughs> Millions, Jimmy. Millions. <laughs> Millions. All right. So it is worth it. Have you ever been asked to, like, autograph a package or anything like that? Yes. I went to my friend's wedding, uh -huh. and I signed a pair of Depends, and I said, be the husband she can always depend on. <laughs> well, this is... Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, <laughs> being a part of this. I mean, uh, it, you would think that you wouldn't want to be on television in a situation like this, and yet you guys defied the odds. Uh, Stu, Stu, are you the most overqualified person to ever model um, adult <laughs> undergarments? Yeah, probably, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Phyllis. I appreciate your time, and, uh, and if you have any other projects, please let us know, all right? Jimmy, we're sending you a free pair, man. It's on its way. 
Great thing is I could talk to these guys for an hour. They'd never need a bathroom break.